want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. This is the day the Lord has made, and we have no choice but to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Hey, let us have a word of prayer. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are giving you all the praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for all that you have done and still doing in our lives. We are grateful to you. We are grateful to you. We are grateful to you for all that you have done and still doing. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. Bless your people with the level of understanding that we may not be destroyed by the deceiving gospels of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, take absolute control over our understanding, our hearing. Let illumination increase. Let revelation knowledge abound. Nothing of me, all of you use this lips of clay to your glory in jesus name amen if you have your bibles i believe you do if you do <clears throat> if you not text take, take your notepads and pens and pencils and take some notes down and refer to it as many times as possible because it's going to bless you amen now uh, do me a, f a favor as always share this broadcast tag a friend a loved one uh, somebody, all right, that um, you can discuss this the um, uh, this message today's segment with is going to be a blessing, all right. So talk somebody, love somebody, um, you know, to um, share this broadcast with somebody. Give all the likes, all the loves, and all the good stuff. Okay, let me acknowledge um, Rama, disciple Rama, <clears throat> Rama the disciple. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Say hello to the family for me. All right. <clears throat> Amen. Spoke to uh, um, your hubby yesterday. All right. Uh, today we want to embark on um, understanding baptism. Understanding baptism. Understanding baptism. What is baptism in the life of the believers? We're going to be looking at a couple of scriptures that I believe will be a blessing to you to enlighten or throw more light on your understanding of baptism okay we believe in water baptism we believe in water baptism as believers by immersion we believe in water baptism by immersion so many questions have come concerning the baptism of uh, of john and the baptism of the holy spirit and so I'm going to take um, some time to um, uh, look into the scriptures. Look into the scriptures. God bless you, Rama. God bless you. Look into the scriptures and see what the scripture says. All right. Not what we have out of our heads, but what the scripture says. All right. And so uh, Jesus, um, you know, um, said, uh, gave two ordinances, two ordinances and um uh, this is very important for us to look at those two ordinances. Very, very key ordinances. Very, very powerful ones too. Uh, number one is the ordinance of um, um, the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper, which we usually or normally call it, commonly known as the communion. All right. There are two um, things that um, Jesus, two ordinances Jesus gave the church. And the uh, church uh, is to observe these two ordinances. One is the Lord's Supper, which commonly we call it communion. Communion, very powerful thing. We will get to that, I promise you as well. We will get to communion. And I also give you a promise that we will get to uh, the baptism. Well, today we are here. We are here. I often say that. The promises given to you are yours. The timing is not in your hands. So the timing will come to <laughs> receive the uh, the promises. Well, today the timing is up. 
for you to receive the first promise of uh, um, the baptism and then we will get to communion later but then um, two ordinances that Jesus left with the church one is the ordinance of the Lord's Supper commonly known as communion communion and then also um, Jesus um, um, the scripture tells us that Jesus you know uh, gave this ordinance for uh, the the believers, if we go to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the 26th verse, Jesus says, and I quote, it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. All right? As often. Beloved, communion is not, be beloved, communion is not only for just Sundays alone. As often, read your word, you see it. Communion is one of the most powerful. Listen, these are the most, I would say that the two powerful ordinances God, Jesus, gave to us before he left. And I'm talking about the ordinances that he gave to the church. Do me a favor again. Please like this, this program. Um, share it with your friends. Tag somebody right now. And uh, also let them know that I want you to know that we are live we are live on YouTube right now. We are live on Periscope, live on um, um, on Twitter, uh, live on Facebook as well. All right, live Facebook, live YouTube, live Periscope, live Twitter, all the good stuff. Live right now. So please share it with your friends and even with your enemies. Listen, it, it will be it will be good for you to share this so that you can discuss this later. You may not have some understanding or something may be cropping up in your mind. You can discuss it by the word, by the word, all right? By the word. God bless all of you. Let me acknowledge you, um, Nafia. God bless you. Um, Albert, hey, my, the, the, uh, I call you people the Canadian, the, the Canadian Pussy. The Canadian Pussy or the Canada Pussy, the disciples of Canada. <laughs> God bless you. Blessings to you as well. Nephia Albert, the apostle, the apostle of the Canadas. God bless you. Charity. God bless you. Rama. God bless all of you. God bless you. I salute all of you in Jesus' mighty name. It's good to know that you're alive and kicking. God bless you. So now, um, Again, we we are um, talking about these two areas, these two ordinances. These are the ordinances. There are other ordinances um, um, that we have. There are other ordinances, but this powerful ordinance uh, that Jesus left with the church, one is the communion, or what we or, or the Lord's Supper, commonly known as the communion. All right, and we look at First Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the 26th verse. Jesus said, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In other words, you stand in affirmation. You, you justify, you confirm, you put your stamp on it. You seal it that indeed... Um, uh, he finished the work. You you affirm the finished work of Jesus Christ. You 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 confirm and affirm it. All right, by us by often eating the bread and drinking of the cup, as often till 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 he comes till he comes. So the communion, beloved communion, we'll get to this. Not today. Communion is not only for Sundays. There are some churches, uh, they take communion just once a month. Um, they, some takes once a year. Uh, but as often, often like as often as you eat, every day as often as you eat, you don't eat once a day. Beloved, we need to come to the place of understanding the word. And, and this is where our power lies, understanding the word. So that we will not be deceived by the uh, the deceptions of the enemy. Okay. Now, um, oh, you're, you're tempting me to get into the area of communion. But communion is one of the most powerful ordinances 
uh, that a believer has to overcome the enemy. Very powerful. With all the demons and all the witches and all the, the wizards and all those people who try to trust me. If I, when we get into the area of communion, you, it will, you, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked as to how powerful it is. Communion does things you have no idea. But we'll get there. All right. Today we're talking about understanding baptism. Understanding the baptism. And like I said, we have been I've been receiving um, you know, messages and questions as to the baptism of uh, John, which is the immersion of water, and um, also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So just you know, stay in tow with me even as we embark on this journey of understanding baptism, all right? And so the second part is, the the second part, the second ordinance is of uh, uh, that of the water baptism. The water baptism, water baptism is a sacred rite, okay? Or sp very sp it's very specific, I mean specific uh, for the believer, okay? Specific for the believer, for sp specific um, assignment for the believer. During the time of Jesus, I'm going to read some notes from I made to myself for you. During the time of Jesus, uh, there were those, this um, arrogant, what I call arrogant religious leaders uh, who refused the counsel of God and would not submit themselves to be baptized by John. They were so arrogant, all right? And because, you know, they are religious. Religious people are arrogant people. Yeah, last night I spent some time in talking to this man of God on the other side of um, the the uh, the world, and um, you know I get I get so into some of these things emotionally, and and uh, I I even wake up my wife, <laughs> and um, you know um, religious people do not have the understanding of the things of God, they have a form of godliness. Are you listening? Religious people have a form of godliness. And we see that. Listen, the Bible is, is there for you, the believer, um, as, as a reference point for you to see your, the dispensation where you're living in now and see yourself in. Lynn, God bless you. All right? The Bible is for our reference point as a believers. Are you listening? And so here, uh, in the days of Jesus, this... Um, um, arrogant religious leaders, uh, they refuse the counsel of God, okay, to submit themselves to be baptized by John. Now, Jesus said that, um, they, um, Jesus said that they were even, they, 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 they were immature, okay, they were so immature. However, they thought that they were all, they were all that in a bag of chips, all right? It, it's, it's so sad when you think that you're all that and you ain't nothing. Ain't that something? It's so sad. It's just sad. You know, I remember um, uh, this uh, woman of God, she's going to be with the Lord. Uh, it says, if you if you are pitiful, unless somebody tells you. <laughs> let, me, let me say it in the Ghanaian thing here, because I, some of you Ghanaians, you can understand. So we are mobo. Just a catch it Amen. And so uh, please share it with those, um, you know, who probably don't understand what I just said. But when you, when you, when you are just pitiful, sad, pitifully sad, unless, unless you are told, you don't even know how sad you are, you look and all that. Anyway, so um, uh, Jesus, um, you know, uh, said, you know, how immature they were with their, with their, with their, you know, write yourself, you know, come, come with me to, um, to Luke chapter 7. I'm just getting excited about something. Luke chapter 7, uh, let's look at the 29 verse. Look at what Jesus says. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 verse 29. All right. You know I will give you scriptures because I want you to increase. Now God bless you. Please, um, again, let me just, whilst you are opening Luke chapter 7 verse 29, let me just say that we are live on, the, on Twitter. We are live on um, on the, um, live on Facebook, of course, on Twitter, on Periscope, YouTube, we are live right now. So please share it with all your friends, touch somebody, let them know we are live in all these areas. 
and uh, they can tune in wherever they are. They, they can stay right there and still see this broadcast and be part of it. All right. Uh, Luke chapter 7. Look at verse 20. Let's read from the, the 20, um, um, the 29 verse. Okay, the 29 verse. Uh, and when all the, the people heard Jesus was talking about um, about the um, uh, John, when Jesus heard, his, um, heard him, when all the people heard him, sorry, even the tax collectors, watch this now, even the tax collectors justified God. Even the tax collectors. Now you see why they justified God. Having been baptized with the baptism of John, even the tax collectors. Look at verse 30. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God for themselves, not having been baptized by John. The Pharisees and the lawyers, the scribes and all those uh, religious people. Are you, are you see here? That's what Jesus was, was saying to them. And uh, look at verse 31. And the Lord said, To what then shall I liken the men of this generation, and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned for you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you said he has a demon. He has a demon just because of <laughs> you. They could see the thing is they could not perceive him by the spirit. Do you, do you know why some people misunderstand you and they can they can handle you they can because they can't perceive you by the spirit you're, you're, there's no there's no identification are you listening to me now verse 34 says the son of man has come eating and drinking and you say you say look a gluten and and wine barber a friend of tax collectors and sinners but wisdom is justified by all her children. Wisdom is justified by all her children. You see, so these people were, 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 did not submit themselves. In other words, they did not humble themselves um, to follow or to receive that ordinance of, of Christ. Okay, now Jesus himself, Jesus humbled himself jesus to be baptized jesus humbled himself to be baptized all right so now i want you to also understand that their refusal okay their refusal i believe god god to get them blinded from seeing that jesus is lord their refusal their refusal, okay, to the counsel of God, their refusal to the counsel of God, got them blinded to see, to let them see that Jesus is Lord or the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that is why they never saw Jesus as Lord. Because they were so arrogant in, their, in themselves and their religious selves that they never, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't come to that place of allowing uh, themselves to be baptized <clears throat> now um, in the book of um, Acts chapter 2 verse 38 uh, Peter speaks about baptism all right so come with me come with me to the book of Acts Acts chapter 2 verse 38 Acts the chapter 2 verse 38 Peter talks about repent and every one of you be baptized um, and all that let's look at that I want you to please follow into and understand, understand the word, okay? <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, come with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, are you there yet? If you are not there yet, say, Pastor, wait for me. If you are there, just give me a thumbs up, a like, and let me know that we are ready to go. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. All right, I'm not waiting. Let's go. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, look at verse 38. Peter then said, 
Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this again. Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized. Now, this is was when Peter has given a sermon after the Pentecost. Okay? When the Pentecost has come and, and they saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, okay, and um, the evidence of speaking in tongues on the people and, and all that, which I call the, the first United Nations meeting, because the Bible says that Everyone under the under the uh, every um, nation under heaven was at present. If you look at verse five, you see there of chapter two. Okay, so here Peter then stood up and gave his first sermon concerning the uh, what has taken place, and then Peter said, verse thirty-eight, he says, "Repent and let every one of you be baptized." in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, I told you this earlier when we were studying about the Holy Spirit more, that the Holy Spirit uh, gives the gift. Uh, we, just last week, we, we saw the gift of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We ended with that and then now we are into the area here of the baptism so you can understand. The importance of the baptism all right okay so so um here let me read that again G, uh, peter is saying then peter said verse 38 of acts chapter 2 repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of jesus for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of uh, the holy spirit verse 39 says for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. The promises are for you. Okay? Now, so we see that um, Peter spoke to them about being baptized for the remission of their sins. And now, water baptism is not, beloved, listen to this. Water, bab water baptism. Hey, woman of God, today I am so blessed. On Facebook with me the first day, pastor, one of the women I really admire in the Lord. All right, Mrs. Emil, Emilia Guavaza. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a great woman of God. I salute you. I salute you. You've made my day. God bless you for coming. God bless you. I love you. Now, um, we're talking about water, baps water baptism. Listen, water baptism is not an optional. It's not an optional uh, for the believer. It's not. Water baptism is not an optional for the believer. Jesus clearly tells us that um, we are to follow the, Lord's, uh, the Lord in the obedience of baptism. Now, those who, who knows Jesus... Uh, as their personal savior will want to, re, you know, to obey the words of God. Those who know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and we see that even Jesus Himself was baptized. Even Jesus Himself was baptized. Now, uh, Jesus tells us to take the gospel um, to the ends of the world. If you come to um, Matthew the twenty-eighth chapter, you that's the last book of Matthew. You see. The instructions that he gave to the disciple concerning concerning baptism all right let's look at that right now concerning baptism let's look at that right now matthew the last book of matthew the 28th um, chapter matthew 28 matthew the last book of matthew which is a 28 verse all right look at um, uh, verse 19 Look at verse 19. Jesus says, To go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. All the nations, not some. Now, why did you know why did Jesus says all the nations? 
Now you realize that he wasn't therefore now specific, um, making reference to the selected people as in the old dispensation, but to all nations. All right, if you come to Isaiah chapter 14, verse, um, um, verse, um, verse 12, I believe, and also Revelations, the 12th chapter, read from the 7th verse down, you will see that Satan, Bible says that Satan deceives all the nations of the earth. Nations of the, all the nations. And here Jesus is giving a commandment for you and me and the disciples of him today to go into all nations. He said, therefore, if you are just joining, we are in Matthew, the 28th chapter, the last book of Matthew, talking about the understanding baptism. Okay? Understanding baptism. God bless you, the world. Uh, go therefore, verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them. Jesus is saying, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is very essential in the life of every believer. If you give your life to Jesus, you must be baptized. And so I'm answering some of your questions. Is baptism important? Yes, absolutely. It's one of the key ordinances of the Christian life, the Christian family. You must be baptized. I know there are some churches who don't believe in baptism. And they say that, uh, well, that's an old thing and, and all that. It's an old thing? How is that an old thing? And yet Jesus is saying that go into even all the nations, okay? Make, number one, make disciples. Beloved, we are to make disciples. Don't keep the people, oh boy. Make disciples. Disciples don't stay at one place. Disciples go. Jesus says, go into all nations and make disciples. Go into all nations and make disciples, okay, of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptize them. And then look at verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Teaching them, you are to be taught. Well, that's what I do. I teach the word. Because when you grab the understanding of the word, nobody can deceive you. Because if you don't grab the understanding of the word of God, you can be deceived. You can be swayed. Scripture says that. Are you listening? You can be swayed. You can give your life to Jesus. Are you listening to me? But if you don't understand the word, you can be swayed. And so you got a bunch of people sitting in the, in the, in the four walls of a building and uh, just imagine just imagine that every one of them had a have understanding of the word and is even full with the holy spirit what kind of church or nation or generation do you think we shall have understanding understanding this is why i always tell you when i close the last of this broadcast the last thing you hear me say is that get understanding why because Understanding the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, I believe verse 10 down, it said, this discretion will, will guide you. Understanding will keep you. You want to be kept. You don't want to be destroyed. Bible says that they that have understanding cannot be destroyed. Are you listening to me? Because it, it means that, you know, you, 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 see, understanding makes you know, you, you have a knowing that you cannot be you, you, you just have the knowing that you just know that you know because of the understanding you have that it don't matter. I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't want to go there, but sometimes you hear some, you know, some, you wonder what, what kind of doctrines and what kind of, uh, 
you know, gospels are some people teaching or preaching. Beloved, let it align with the word. Whatever you are listening to, it must align with the word. And that is why I take you to the word. Give you reference point for you to see what God is saying. All right. Obey what God is saying. Obey what God is saying. I, I was sharing with my um, my sister over the weekend. <clears throat> I said, Sylvia, that's one thing I want you to understand. I agree with God and I don't agree with no man. I agree with God. I agree with God. And that's it. Bible says if any two will touch and agree. I don't agree with men. Men will change their mind. Listen, men will praise you today and crucify you tomorrow. But I will agree with God because whatever he said is settled and done. Are you, are you listening to me? You better agree with God. Agree with God. So I agree with God. And that's that settles the matter. All right. So we're talking about, so Jesus says, go and make disciples and baptize them. So the essential part of the believer is, uh, this baptism is very essential in the, in the life of a believer, every believer. <clears throat> All right. Jesus says, uh, who repent and follow the Lord, those, those who repent and follow the Lord uh, in obeying or, or obedience of baptism are saved. They will be saved. Jesus said that in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 16. Okay? Obe <laughs> Rama says obedience is better than sacrifice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You better ask Saul. He will tell you. When God says, do it, do it. Do it. Now, when you start questioning, I don't know, uh, is, is it God saying? That, that means you... Uh, you know what? You need to check whether the Holy Spirit is still in you or not. Because when the Holy Spirit is in you, when God speaks, the Holy Spirit identifies, he bears witness with what God is telling you. I often say this, when, when somebody comes to give you prophecy, it should be a confirmation of what God has already told you. Because his spirit is in you. God will, Why would God pass bypass his spirit? To go and talk to somebody to come and tell you something and his spirit is in you. His spirit is the one who downloads the mindset of God concerning you and your life and all that. Are you listening to me? And so that's by the way. So now um, come with me to Mark chapter 16 verse 16. Mark chapter 16 verse 16. Mark chapter 16 verse 16. My goodness, I'm telling you, listen, it's very powerful when 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 you you have the Holy Spirit in you and talks to you. The other day I was sharing some things with one of um, I think it's Rama, and um I was sharing with you concerning dreams and how the Holy Spirit, why God speaks to you through the Holy Spirit uh in your dreams. Very powerful. And that's one of the ways that one of the areas in which God speaks to some of some of some of us. Okay, there are so many areas you have to know. You walk with God, you have to know the, some of the ways God speaks. And um, in, in this past month or so, I mean, it's it's just been awesome, and I'm enjoy. I just enjoy how how you know God is speaking and the Holy Spirit, and 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 the next the, the next day you get up in the morning and it's bang, it's right there. It's like whoa, this is exciting. My goodness, God is still speak. Glory be to God. It's exciting. It's exciting. I am man, I'm telling you. It's exciting. So look at verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. This is Jesus speaking here. He who believes. All right. Now, let me start from verse, even verse, um, verse 15, just so that we can make a little sense over here. But please take your time and read. When I give you a scripture, all right. Please later on start from verse one of that scripture, of that um, uh, chapter, and read it until you get to what I call the punchline. I only give you the punchlines based on our discussion, based on the teachings, based on the revelations I'm bringing to you. All right. 
I give you the punchline, but please go back and read from verse one of that of that um, scripture so that you can uh, get more revelations on that. So again, verse fifteen says, uh, "Let's let's start from verse 14, Make some sense, all right? This is about the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, after the resurrection. Now, afterward, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and um, Jesus re uh, rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe. <clears throat> they did not believe those who had seen He, Jesus, after He had resurrected. They did not believe. Agnes, God bless you. They did not believe. Now, and um, verse fifteen says, "And He, Jesus." said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus said to them now, go to the world. Go to the world. Beloved, you listening to me now, you are to preach the gospel. You are to teach the gospel. Please, please, please. I beg you in the name of Jesus. You are a disciple. You have been born again. You have received Jesus and become a disciple. You are to go and disciple others. Please don't just be receiving these messages and do nothing with it. Soon and so soon and very soon he's going to show up and ask you, did you obey his, his commandment? Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandment. If you love me, don't say you love Jesus and not obey him. Don't say you love don't say you love me when I tell you something and you don't do it. That's what it means. Don't do that. That's that's a that's that's a demonstration of uh, of a spirit of hypocrisy. And you are not a hypocrite. So please don't do that. <clears throat> all right? Go and disciple Jesus says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Do you know that you can start right? That's why I tell you know some of you that just start this fellowship in your own living room. Invite your neighbors. Invite some of them. Some of them will come. Some will not come. Or maybe all of them will not come. But don't stop right there. When you go to work, find a way to talk to somebody. Just say, God bless you when you see somebody at the mall. God bless you and you have no idea what you probably did and that will be attractive. You have no idea. Sometimes you just say hello to somebody. Sometimes you just by opening your mouth, somebody will just look at you and say, are you a Christian? Yes, they see. And then you know that it's an opening by the Holy Spirit for you to talk to that person. Different ways, different ways, different ways. Now remember, not everybody accepted Jesus and followed him. But to them that receive him, to them that receive. So you just do what you are asked to do. Let's do that. All right. Now Jesus says, go and preach the gospel to every creature on the face of this earth. Look at verse 6. Punchline. Punchline. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. He who is baptized you who believes and be baptized first of all they have to believe and then receive the baptism are you listening to me so when they are being baptized there is an understanding of their baptism that's why last week uh, somebody asked me that um, is it okay to baptize children i said no children have no understanding of what baptism is and you the adult you just can't come to church and and, uh, and just so, oh, come and let me baptize you. No, you have to understand what the baptism is about. In all thy getting, get understanding. Because when you have that understanding, nothing can nothing can move you. you. Nothing can shake your foundation. Are you listening to me? All those fear tactics the enemy brings and all those, you know. Listen, I tell people this. The lion is not the king of the jungle. We have been bamboozed with that nonsense. The lion is not. The lion only roars to scare people. All right, to scare the other animals who do not have a strong foundation. 
But the lion itself sees another small animal, a dog-looking animal, and the lion run. Because this little dog-looking uh, has a solid foundation. If you go to the book of, of, uh, of Job, God was describing this kind of animal there. I'm telling you, it's scary. And you think the lion can stand that, that animal? The lion runs. Don't tell me the lion is the king of the jungle. There ain't no king of the jungle. And that's some of the light, the deceiving stuff that we'll be receiving because why we don't know. Beloved, what you don't know cannot bless you. And that's one of the things I, I love to say because I've come to know that. What you do not know cannot bless you. All right? And so Jesus is saying that he who believes, believes if you believe and is baptized will be saved. But those who do not believe will be condemned. And of course, it says this science will follow those who believe. The science will follow those who believe. The science follow those who believe. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. He says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. In my name, you see the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes in <laughs> through Jesus. Through Jesus. Are you listening? All right. And they will take up serpents and they will drink um, anything deadly. When they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. And so we're talking about a baptism of um, the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm sorry, I said the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Of course, the baptism of um, the Holy Spirit and the, the baptism of water, of which John um um, demonstrated now if you if you if you come to um acts chapter 8 verse 38 we see um a dialogue between a eunuch and philip all right something very interesting i always like to uh, anytime i see that i mean dialogue be, is so interesting um acts chapter 8 verse 38 all right the eunuch all right understood his need for water baptism the eunuch even understood that. <clears throat> and Philip clearly tells him the, the, um, the, the condition under which uh, he qualifies uh, to be baptized. And we just saw that. Because you have to believe to be baptized. Okay? That qualifies you. Your qualification is in the believing. Your qualification is in the believing. Okay, your qualification is in the believing. Um, let, let's let's look at that scripture very quickly. Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-eight. Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-eight. Go with me real quick. Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-eight. Very powerful scripture. I love it. Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-eight. Now look at something here. Um, um, this is Philip witnesses, uh, witness, uh, to the, uh, this, um, uh, the, uh, Ethiopian treasure. All right. Um, <clears throat> if you just take your time and read that, I just want to give you the punchline here. Um, let's start, let's even start from, um, uh, verse 34. Okay. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you. Of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of those of some other man? Philip then opened his mouth and uh, and beginning at this at this scripture, preached Jesus to the eunuch. And I want you to please go back and read this, all right? So you have a clear understanding of this. But I want to give you the punchline. Verse. Um, 36 says, Now as they went down the road, Philip and this eunuch, they came to some water, some water, and the eunuch said, See, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? This is water. What hinders me from being baptized, Philip? Philip then said to him, If you believe, you see, that is the first thing, beloved, when you are leading anybody into baptism, make sure they believe and understand what it is. 
Philip says, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. And the eunuch answered and says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe. Do you believe? I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Verse 38, punchline. So he commanded the chariot, the, he, the, the, uh, the eunuch who was sitting in the chariot, commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and be baptized and baptized him. Philip baptized the eunuch. Um, and um, when they had come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, ah, I see the manifestation of His power, the Holy Spirit um, uh, caught Philip um, away so that the eunuch saw Philip no more. Philip was ah, taken up, taken up from his presence. And, um, you know, but the, the, the exchange here is so powerful. So interesting. Please, please, please beloved, um, look at um, uh, that scripture very, very um, uh, carefully. It's very interesting. All right. Very in interesting. Very interesting. Read that, read that, and read that, and read that again, and read that again, read that again. All right. So here we see that the eunuch um, was baptized by, the, by Philip based on his... Um, um, believe in the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, Jesus, the Son of God. The di disciples was uh, were also um, disciples. Often baptize people who heard and believe uh, the word. <clears throat> the disciples baptize. Beloved, when you, you go out as a believer, as a disciple, I'm speaking to believers now as a disciple. When you go out and you speak the word to them, to the unbelievers, and they come to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, all right, it's, it's important that you get them baptized. You get them baptized. It's very essential. It's an ordinance that Jesus gave. Look, why did Jesus himself got baptized? To demonstrate to you and I the importance of it. The importance of it. Okay? The importance of it. We believe in the immersion. This is a formula that Jesus even uh, submitted himself to. In the immersion. Not, I'm not talking about sprinkling. All right, that, that sprinkling thing, okay? Listen, this sprinkling thing came because some leaders distorted the purpose of the, um, of the water baptism <clears throat> and making it equal with your salvation. No, 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 it's not. It was not so, and it's still not so because the word of God has not changed. It's not about sprinkling of, of water on you that, Bang, bang, sprinkling, and, and that's no. Because, see, we're going to be looking at some scriptures that talks about the fact that when we are immersed in water, we die. And when we come out, we resurrect the same spirit of, of, uh, of our Lord. Okay? Now, look at John chapter 4. Let's read um, John chapter 4. Come with me to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Matthew, Luke. Matthew, what? Mark, Luke, and John, right? <laughs> Some of you don't know the scriptures. Learn. I want you to learn. All right. Come, John chapter 4. Uh, John chapter 4. Let's read from verse 1. All right. This one, this time we're reading from verse 1. Are you there with me? Quickly. Okay. Let's do that. Our time is just about up. Now, therefore, verse 1. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees, had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Verse 2, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, the disciples were the ones who did the baptism. Anytime the disciples just, you know, make disciples preach the gospel to others and 
and um, they, they they come to believe the word, right? Uh, all right, and accepted um, Jesus and all that. They were baptized. Listen to this. Therefore, when the Lord knew that, the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Verse 2 says, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, but his disciples. Jesus then left Judea and departed again to Galilee. Read the rest of it. All right. But I hear, I want you to, to know that um, the disciples often baptize people who heard and believe in Jesus. The disciples baptize. As a disciple, you are to do that. Remember, Jesus gave the commandment. He says, go and make disciples. First of all, make disciples and those who believe, baptize them. Kojo, God bless you. Baptize them, those who believe. When you make disciples, when you preach the gospel, he says, go into the world, all nations, and preach the gospel. When they believe, baptize them in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They have to be baptized. Baptism is very essential um, 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 uh, ordinance in the life of the believer. Baptism is so essential in the life of the believer. So we have to be baptized. Okay? Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter um, 1, Paul speaks of the fact that he was called to preach and not to baptize. Paul talks about the fact that he was called to preach and not to baptize. However, he still baptized. Because, he, you listen, as a disciple, you have to obey. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandment. If you love Jesus, then obey his commandment. I'm bringing you to the place for you to, to see that it is not only for those in the fivefold ministries, which you are even part of it, who have to baptize people, who, are, who receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The pastor who is in, standing in the pulpit on Sundays may be in the, in the place where or, may, or, or you may be in a place where the pastor who is standing in the pulpit on Sunday is not. And if you make a disciple and you cannot bring all the person all the way to where the pastor is, what are you going to do? Leave that person to just stay like there like that? No. Look at Philip. He was still talking to the eunuch when they were walking. On, they came and then, and then the eunuch saw water. Some little small water somewhere along the, the, the road, and the eunuch pointed to the attention of, of Philip and says, What stops me from being baptized right now? Let's do it right now. Let's get this thing done. I I, I want to have the full the full meal. If i if I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and He's my Lord and everything, I want to have everything of Him. Remember when, oh boy, remember when Jesus was washing the foot of the disciples and Peter was, you know, doing all that to no business. I don't want you to wash my foot and this, you know, Jesus says, well, then you ain't going to be part of me. He says, okay, then therefore, not only my foot, but my head and every, everywhere. You, he, you better be, you better receive the full load. Are you listening to me? Beloved, this is, this is there for you and I. We are missing a lot of things. Because of our inability to understand and comprehend what God has given to us. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Let me recap quickly. I'm going to, I'm going to um, um, pause here with, uh, with that of Paul. And so we see that Paul, Paul still, even though he talks about the fact that he was, uh, he was uh, sent to preach the gospel, um, he, he wasn't asked to, but he's still baptized. And I'm going to show you that. Come with me to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And then we're going to just pause here and uh, continue. I know I think I've given you enough for the day. <clears throat> All right? We're going to pause here and continue tomorrow. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Come with me quickly. Come with me quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 13. Come with me to 13. 
All right. Now, again, that's a punchline. It means that you need to go and read from verse 1 down. All right. First Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 13. Now, um, yeah, this is it. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? <laughs> Watch this now. I thank God that I baptized. Now listen to Paul now. I thank God. Now this is Paul speaking here. I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. Okay? Lest anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides, uh, Stephanus, besides, I do not know whether I baptize any other person. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Even though he said he was sent to not to be baptizing people, but to preach the gospel. However, by his understanding of the ordinance Jesus had put in place. Those of you who came on, on the, the platform late, I said that earlier, these two powerful ordinances that Jesus gave to the church before his departure, one of which, the first one, is the ordinance of what we call the Lord's Supper, that it's commonly called the communion. We will get to that. It's very powerful. I'm telling you, you better stay with this broadcast because if you miss it, you may have to just go to uh, uh, the YouTube and catch up with it. Very powerful. Communion is very powerful. Break it down for you. I mean, you, you, your authority, you have, you have so, we have so much authority that we are not even using it. We're not using it. And so communion and also the second ordinance is um, the baptism of um, um, uh, water baptism and that of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? And so we, we're going to pause here. Beloved, the interesting thing for those who have not given your life to Jesus, the interesting thing here is for you to watch this now. If you believe, you will receive the baptism. If you believe. If you believe and, and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you believe. Do you believe Jesus? If you don't believe, as many as receive him, to them were given the right to become. To them. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Let me let me just use that to close here. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Listen to this. Very powerful. Mark the 16th chapter. Mark the 16th chapter. Come with me. We've seen that already, but I want you to see it again. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. He who believes is baptized. He who believes is baptized. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Listen, you're not going to go to hell because of your sins. You're going to go to hell because of your belief in Jesus Christ. The Son of God. Are you listening to me? After the finished work of Jesus... It's no longer about your sins that will take you to hell. It's about your belief in Jesus. If you don't receive him, well, you will not be saved. If you receive him, you'll be saved. That's what the scripture says. And I believe the word. Whether you think somebody wrote it and, and what, I believe the because Because my spirit, okay, my spirit bears witness with it. My spirit bears witness with it. He who believes and is baptized so if you believe that jesus is the son of god i want you to give your life to him if you have not done that and for those of you who are watching right now wherever you are under the sound of my voice you have this opportunity right now to take this decision the best decision you have ever taken in your life by giving your life to jesus say just close your eyes right now even as i pray with you say lord jesus I am a sinner and I've come to hear this message. I believe with all my heart that you are the son of God. 
Therefore, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Receive me, O oh God, today. Receive me, Lord. Write my name in your book that I may become a disciple of you. I thank you and I believe that you have heard me and you have received me. I receive you, Lord. Jesus, in your name, now baptize me in the Holy Spirit that I may increase in telling others concerning you. In Jesus, your name, I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, beloved, you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are born again. Jesus says you must be born again. <clears throat> you are born again. And therefore, I want you to um, 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 get to the, you know, take the next step. And that is be part of the fellowship. Be part of the family of Christ. Be part of the body of Christ. Okay? Find yourself in your geographic uh, location where you live. Okay? You may find, look for a, a Bible believing teaching church that you may study the word and increase. All right? Introduce yourself to the leadership of that church. Let them know that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are born again and you want to grow and you want to be baptized. You want to be baptized. You have to be baptized. It's not an optional stuff. It's, it's, it's mandatory. You must be baptized. Jesus himself, tomorrow we will see that. Join me by the grace of God. We see that Jesus even got himself baptized. Why did Jesus have to be baptized? He, he didn't have to. But for you and I, for you and I to know the importance of the baptism by immersion. Baptism by immersion. All right? And so get yourself let them know that this is your um, decision you have taken and um, it's very important. Now, if the, ch if the church does not believe in baptism, you can show them the word or just, you know, find another, find another church that believes. These days, I mean, like um, somebody says, we charismatic, we, we free people, free to change our minds, uh, free to... Um, um, free to uh, do whatever we want to do but we are not free to do whatever we want to do we are not are you listening to me we are not free to do whatever we want to do and so therefore therefore you if they do not believe in um, the ordinance that has been put in place for you and me just pass on and get to uh, um where they believe the body of Christ is okay now every information you need to contact this ministry it's right on your on scrolling right now on your on your screen please give us a call all right give us a call we 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 also want you to hear from you I I want to hear a testimony I want to hear what this ministry is doing for you whether it's blessing you increasing you or you, it's not doing it all right it's very very important to us here so please take all the information you can send an email um get to the website and um you know plug in your information uh we, we you know we also welcome yes we also welcome a donation okay if you have a listen if you want to uh, send in your tithes you maybe you don't have a place um that you know you call your home church you but you want to send your tithes you can do that you can do that it's a good ground for you to sow your offerings are also welcome all right right now like i said we are um joy foundation we, in collaboration with joy foundation um we are uh, they preparing to uh, uh, be a blessing to this orphanage uh children in um, west africa in uh, in ghana to be specific in the Volta region area of Ghana, all right. Joy found uh, joy joy in giving foundation. Joy in giving foundation. There's a joy, all right. God loves a cheerful giver, not a fearful one. And so, uh, um, if you want to team up with us uh, with your financial contribution, please do, all right. Please do. They are in the Volta region. If you need more information about them, please send us 
email we can send all the information for you to even check them or if you are in there in Ghana you can go and visit them all right and they will let you know that um, in partnership Patrick Quinn Ministries in partnership with Joy in Giving Foundation we supporting them right now the children they are sitting on the floor in school in their classrooms all right with no chairs or or tables and these are some things that the government is supposed to provide for them but hey um, I, I believe that uh, our faith-based initiatives um, allows us to do that. So um, we have engaged some um, carpenters, you know, to make chairs and tables and all that uh, for them, and so um, so that they can sit down, sit on the on the uh, classrooms comfortably and steady. All right, so we're doing that for them. So please um, join us. Uh, in doing that, you, again, like I said, your financial contribution will go a long way to do that. Other people are, are doing it. I mean, Coca-Cola, can you imagine that big company? They have given us a lot of, um, uh, you know, the Joy Foundation, a uh, lot of uh, stuff to, you know, be part of that. Last year, some other um, uh, major, you know, uh, corporations team up because they believe, they believe in, in the, the sincerity and the truthfulness of this foundation so join us to do that all right we are teaming up with them uh in doing that so go to the website um you see the the uh, the, the place there for you to donate you can use your paypal or your credit card uh if you want to use a cash app the number is right there cash app or zelle the number is there the 914-572-9816 all right if you want to use a cash app or zelle the numbers for that is 914 five seven two nine eight one six or if you want to just you know use your credit card or what have you go to the website www.patrickquenu.patrickquenuministries.com and uh, click on the button that says donate and uh, follow the rest of the uh, the directions there may god bless you uh, may you increase in your understanding in the word of God for those that have understanding cannot be destroyed nothing should be able to destroy you when God has made you for his purpose on this earth our inability to understand the word of God allowed the enemy to bring to to bring fear but we are no longer afraid it don't matter who you are it don't matter what kind of demon is talking we are not afraid why because the word of God is powerful the word is powerful god backs his word and uh, <laughs> i will not go there god backs his word well i want you to know that i love you there's nothing you can do about it the most important thing i want you to know is that you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in god and in all that getting get understanding when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you will do great and mighty things. I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding.